Let's see how long it takes. To... Oh, we are recording already. Hello, I'm Mr. Matt Paul. And what was the main cause of war between Spain and England in 1588? Because as we know, a Spanish armada came. It came a sailing, but it was not successful. You know why? Philip said, I'm going to conquer you. And Elizabeth said, I'm harder. I'm harder. Right, anyway, right. Away from my dad joke there. Let's actually go through this, okay? Now, I want to start at the beginning. King Philip II, there with his Hasburg jaw, actually asked for Elizabeth's hand in marriage. Okay, and she declined. Now, where she declined based on physical attractiveness, which is unlikely, or due to the fact that he was a Catholic and would expect to rule the nation? Well, that's another matter. However, there's a word which we can say. It was to his chagrin. That's a nice word, isn't it? Chagrin. It's quite a cheeky word, wouldn't you say? That? A cheeky word. So, chagrin. He was not impressed by the fact that she rejected his marriage because it limited his power. And what we've got to remember about King Philip II of Spain, he wasn't just King Philip II of Spain. He was also the King of Portugal. He was also in charge of the Spanish Netherlands. He was also the King of Naples. He was also the King of a massive Spanish empire. This was a man who was used to having his cake and eating it. And all of a sudden, he had a bit of a cake and he couldn't eat it. And that cake was England. And he wasn't impressed. And he had a long-term strategy probably in his mind to one day regain that nation under his influence and a catholic influence at that so let's get to the next point which i was going about which is religious differences being an ardent and strict catholic and elizabeth being a kind of middle way protestant they did not see to eye or eye to eye on matters religious so there's definitely a religious cause in this conflict. Now, talking about the Spanish Netherlands, that is important. In fact, it's one of the most important things that I'm going to discuss with you. So I'd expect your ears to prick up that much more. Would I not? I'd expect your eyes and ears to be this way. So, Holland or the Netherlands. Hello, oh, yes, thank you, please. I like the goal there. It's very nice. So, it's just across the water. Now, I, myself, have been on holiday to Holland or the Netherlands, wherever, wherever you want to call it, but it's basically the Netherlands. And it's very quick. When I got on the plane from cheeky old Gatwick, it was only 45 minutes. And I thought, min gotta. Okay? My gosh. My gosh. How quick that journey was. Now, Holland or the Netherlands is very, very close strategically to England. And that means it would be a good base for the Spanish, if they had troops there, to invade England from. So if we have a bunch of Protestant Dutchmen that hate the Catholic Spanish being there and they're rebelling against King Philip of Spain, would it not be a good idea to send them some weapons and some men? Imagine sending an army of 6,000 and sending them lots of silver and sending one of your most trusted advisors, Sir Robert Dudley, to command a force in the Spanish Netherlands to ensure that it did not remain Catholic. So you see, there is a proxy war, a cold war between Spain and England in the Netherlands. Now, as we know, proxy wars can lead to full-scale wars between two nations. So you've got England, Protestant England, and you've got Catholic Spain tussling over this region. It's very important. Come in, I'm making a video, so come in quickly and sit down, okay? Right, thank you. Now, we know that Elizabeth also faced many plots, okay, from Mary, Queen of Scots. And these plots of Mary, Queen of Scots, well, they're together, okay? They're very much together as factors. So let's get into that. So there were three plots against Elizabeth. The RTB, one, two, three. RTB, one, two, three. The Rodolphi plot in 1571. The Frockmorton plot in 1583. And the Babington plot in 1586. And we know for a fact that King Philip II of Spain was a fan of all three plots. So that's going to upset diplomatic relations even more. In fact, dip diplomatic relations were so upset that Elizabeth kicked her Spanish the Spanish ambassador out of England. How the relations are getting worse and worse. Okay, And that final plot, that Babington plot, the beer barrel plot, plot, the plot where Sir Thomas Phillips cracked the code, the plot where Sir Francis Walsingham made the fantastic arrests and supplied the evidence against Mary Queen of Scots that she was writing in a Catholic cipher, a Catholic code that she wanted to replace Elizabeth and to set 
the man to work to kill Elizabeth. Well, that led to her egg execution. Not too cracking for her. I know the yoke was on her in the end. Okay, but she was executed at Fotheringay Castle in 1587 as a direct consequence of that plotting. And although her execution was a consequence of the plots, her execution served as a final cause for the Spanish Armada because Elizabeth had done something which had never been done before. She had executed a fellow monarch. Okay, that had set a precedent, not a president. I'm not talking about Biden or Donald Trump. I'm talking about a precedent. It's spelt with a C, not an S. Precedent. A first case of something. So if Elizabeth can have Mary Queen of Scots executed for basically being a traitor, okay, then why can't King Philip II, if he takes over England, have Elizabeth executed? So you see the plot thickened. But we've got some very interesting factors here. Another factor was piracy. So we know that for Sir Francis Drake, who was that great English explorer who circumnavigated the world from 1577 to 1580, we know that he stole a lot of Sir Philip, not Sir Philip, of King Philip II's treasure from South America. The famous Spanish treasure ship, Nuestra de la Concepcion, okay, or something along those lines, okay, Our Lady of the Divine Conception had so much silver stolen for it that Sir Francis Drake could use it for ballast, okay? And the return that he made on his investment and the Queen Elizabeth's investment on that massive spree there, that thieving spree, well, that was huge. So she made a lot of money out of picking his pocket, which further disintegrated relations. And just so you know, there was a civil war upon religion in France as well. And the Protestants and the Catholics have been killing each other for a long time there. And that exacerbated the situation because, again, Elizabeth wanted a favourable outcome for the Protestants there and King Philip wanted a favourable outcome for the Catholics. So, as we can see, there's a cornucopia, a wide range, a litany, a myriad of different factors of which they were on opposing sides. Okay? Spain versus England, Catholic versus Protestant, Mary Queen Scots versus Elizabeth, French Protestants against French Catholics, Dutch Catholics against French, against <laughs> Dutch Protestants, okay? So many, many different factors there. Plots, religious differences, piracy, France, a civil war, the Elizabeth supporting the Dutch revolt and a marriage reje rejection, Mary Queen Scots execution. What more do you want? What more could you write about? There's in fact too much to write about in this exam. Too much. There's so much to write about for this question. You will have to probably pick a couple of factors and write them, write about them in a bit more detail. It's too much. Okay. And I'm going to leave it on that note there because I'm running out of battery. So stop recording.